social media is becoming the wild west again in 2023. And I'm glad I was disenamored with it, especially at the end of 2021. And I didn't see anything useful coming from it again after that. But I'm seeing light at the end of the social media tunnel right now. So today I'm going to share with you how I'm perceiving the landscape, where I think it's going, and how you can take advantage of changes that are coming. Shout out to Jeff. Thanks for inspiring this episode based on a conversation that we had. Incoma's Marketing Strategies is a podcast for small business owners hosted by Audrey Kirchner, co-founder and chief marketing strategist at Incoma, helping you navigate the world of marketing so that you can market your business in the right way, see growth, and thrive regardless of the industry you're in. To learn more about Incoma and what we do, ask a question or schedule a marketing evaluation, go to the website Incoma.com. That's I-N-K-Y-M-A.com. Listen to the show on your podcast player of choice, the Incoma website, or the Incoma YouTube channel. Just search for Incoma Marketing Strategies and you'll find what you need. So before we get into this, a little bit of housekeeping stuff. I may be recommending products or talk about podcasts that I've had or articles that support what we're talking about today. All of that's going to be in the show notes for the episode on the website on Incoma.com, including a rough transcript. When I do recommend products, sometimes we are affiliate partners with these companies because we use these products. I never recommend anything that I don't use or want to use or am thinking about using, but it's usually mostly stuff that we use day to day for our clients. So clicking through those links helps us a lot to keep creating this free content for you. Okay. Now that all of that is out of the way, let's talk about social media. So if you've listened to past episodes about social media, when I mention it, you'll know I'm not a big fan of it as your primary marketing vehicle for a small business. You have to do a lot of posting just to move the needle a couple of inches, right? So you don't get a lot of bang for your buck with those. And so then the landscape of social media started to change drastically in 2022. It's like from night and day, what we used to do for years just stopped working. And so here's some key factors around why that's happened, at least why I think it's happened. So Facebook, the platform, fell off a cliff. They went from having a total stock value of like a trillion dollars in the fourth quarter of 2021 to lose about two thirds of that value in the fourth quarter of 2022. And now as of this recording, the last I've heard, they're either doing layoffs or they're about to do layoffs, which they've never done in the history of Facebook for however long it's been around. So why is this happening now? I think there's a lot of reasons out there. There's a lot of different speculation, but here's what I think it is. From my personal experience, using the platform for both personal and business They treat legitimate users like garbage, like they're not worthy of their time or their effort, and especially those who are trying to run a business. You go way back like five, six, seven years, and they were really trying to cater to small business owners, help them out, give them features, all that good stuff. Everybody loved it. We were all like, yeah, Facebook's it. People liked it just to use businesses like it. And then that changed. They started closing accounts without any recourse to reopen them. It was one of the biggest issues that I saw. And in fact, it actually happened to me. If you listen to my episode on Facebook disabled me, it happened to me in December of 2021. And I actually didn't get access back to my account, meaning to be able to use it for business as well as personal until May or June. And I'm a marketing partner. Like I am a registered marketing partner with Facebook. I have the account access so that if I need special help, I actually have support. And it took hours and hours of being on the phone with these folks after I got access back, even just to get things fixed. And actually, as of this recording, it's still not completely fixed and right. So I think there's infrastructure issues there too. So the only thing that I think people are using Facebook for now is specific groups for interests, hobbies, and the marketplace, buying and selling. I actually see the marketplace go in 
the way of Craigslist at some point in the near future because of scams. And the track record at Meta is they don't have a really good process to differentiate between legitimate users and scammers. And so they're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater when that whole thing gets really out of control, which I think it's going to. And then there's Twitter. Elon Musk bought it in 2022. And a lot of us in this arena are just sitting around waiting to see what's going to happen because it's just all over the place. It's fun to watch. But again, I'm not quite sure if it's going to be a usable platform for businesses again, whether that be organic or for digital advertising. And so then we turn to TikTok, which has made short videos content really front and center. Like it just took off. People like it. You go down the rabbit hole so much so that YouTube has created their shorts platform, which is similar to TikTok. TikTokers are using it. And I think YouTube is really going to double down on shorts in 2023 because of the success that they've seen with the platform in beta in 2022. So with my crystal ball firmly in place, I'm going with video for the win in 2023 and beyond. I remember doing a lecture on trending. I think it was back in 2020. Actually, no, it wasn't 2020. It was like 2018 where I was like, Video's coming. Everybody's saying it's coming. And I kind of got these looks like, nah, well, it's here. And I think it's going to be here to stay. And I think one of the reasons why we as content creators love video so much is because it is highly consumable over long amounts of time for the people that want to consume it. Most of us would rather watch a video than read an article. And it's because of the audio and the motion put together which then creates this really sticky retention quality, which is very great for businesses. It's video, but then video where? Where do I put my video? And all of that goes back to the type of business you are and where your clients spend their time. Most people are on YouTube these days. They've got the biggest share of the market. Whether you're looking for how-to video, you're looking at cat videos, it doesn't matter. So you probably want to always throw YouTube into the mix as of right now. And then focus on long content and short content. And then you can just share it across other platforms where you know that your audience is. Is your audience on TikTok? Yes or no? Is it on Instagram? I wouldn't spend too much time trying to post out to Facebook stories. I don't know how useful that would be. But if you feel like that's where your audience is or you have a group on Facebook that you are nurturing, then I would post it there. So what this really means is make sure you know your demographics. We're going back to kind of some marketing 101. Know who your client is, where they hang out, what they like to do. Because if your community is on a specific channel, posting there isn't going to help you. No matter how popular what you're creating is, you're just not going to convert people into leads, into customers. And that's really what social media marketing is about, is to generate that awareness about your business, that sticky quality of, oh, yeah, this is a business I might be interested in. Let me go check them out. And then ultimately, they either get on a list or they buy something. I heard the groans when I was talking. Oh, video, right? Video from a production process in the past has always been a very scary thing, like editing videos. We just got used to editing images and overlaying them with copy and other things. But like with the photography and the still work and the overlay, which went from hard to easy, video creation has as well. It's not as hard and daunting as it used to be. You don't need big fancy cameras, equipment, and you don't need this very highly detailed, hard to learn how to use editing software. Honestly, all you probably need is a smartphone which you probably have in your pocket already, and Canva. Smartphone cameras are great, especially the iPhone. I don't have any experience with any other platform. I've been an iPhone user since I moved to smartphone years and years and years ago. But the quality of the cameras have gotten better and better. This is coming from someone who used to photograph professionally with a Canon, and now the Canon has been tucked away in a drawer forever because I'm like, my phone's right here. I like the quality. I like the size. It's really good. So video quality is just as good as the still image quality. So much so it's actually getting pretty good in low lighting, which always used to be the biggest issue. So don't feel like you have to buy a camera if you want to start shooting video. Also, the other thing that works really well is if you have an external video conferencing camera, 
for your desktop. So if you're doing a lot of Zoom video conferencing for your business, you could use that, especially if it's external. Usually the ones built into the laptop aren't so great or to the computer. But like LG Logi series, they're really, really great. They were originally designed for gamers so that they could stream their games and show you themselves while they're playing their game. And they're pretty much under a hundred bucks typically. And even that is not necessary. Having your smartphone or having a video conferencing camera, because you actually don't have to create video footage if you don't want to. And this is where the magic of Canva comes in. So Canva is not only the editing software that you can use to create video in any size, it also has a very large unlimited usage stock library for video and still photography. You have to get the pro account, but the pro account is anywhere from $13 per month to $15 per month. Whereas if you have subscribed to a stock library in the past, they start out at a hundred bucks a month and it goes up from there. So you get the editing software along with all the stock footage that you could ever want, which is probably the same footage that you're paying a hundred bucks a month for. That's what I found is like I would compare them side by side because I had multiple accounts open. And yeah, it's the same footage in one that's in the other. So go with Canva. With Canva, you can create those short format videos, the long format videos without being on camera. These types of videos actually do really well on both YouTube and YouTube shorts and even on TikTok. I've seen them. They have a lot of views. They have a lot of followers. So you could use stock video with voiceover, or you could actually just have text overlaying it with the message that you're trying to send out. And then Canva actually has pre-built templates for the different size videos for the different platforms out there. So for YouTube, it has the standard nine by 16 ratio format. And then for shorts and TikToks, 16 by nine. And they have them all there. You just search for it. You can put TikTok video template boom, it comes up. And then you can do the same thing for Instagram reels. And then, you know, if you want normal formatted YouTube videos, Canva also has a feature where you can, if you edit a video and you've got it where you want it in one format size, you can turn on the multi-size feature and then adjust it for all the different sizes all in one place. So you can have it set up in all different types of formats, which I think is pretty cool. So let's say you do want to shoot a little video, but then you need some stock footage or additional still images, you can blend all of that together inside of the Canva. You can upload your footage and then blend it in with stock footage and videos. And you can still be on screen if you want to. You can actually even record your video inside of Canva. It's kind of, I think it's limited, right? But Again, it's probably good for 99% of the people out there, especially if you're just starting out. So you can record you, you can record your screen, Or you could record both at the same time and do that whole picture in picture thing. And then if you're going to be posting to standard YouTube, Canva actually has templates for your YouTube thumbnails, which are pretty good. So you can get a series of those going. And then, of course, Canva originally started out with doing print and digital marketing material. So you can still do all of that if you need to create still photography images, if you need posters, if you need postcards, all of that's in there. So not too bad of an ROI for $13 a month and all of it's unlimited. As long as you're paying your subscription, you have access to all of it and so much more. So I did a, um, a video on Canva and a couple of the features, as well as I did a whole podcast episode talking about all the things that I like about Canva. So definitely those will be in the show notes. Go check them out. So hopefully I've piqued your interest on where social media is going. So let's talk about what you need to do next if you want to get in and ride this wave to see if it's something you want to do for your business. So if you love the idea of video, but you don't want to do it yourself, you're in luck, right? Maybe you're like, yeah, I want to do all this, but I have no idea how to do it. Don't want to learn how to use it. Don't want to be on the camera. Don't want to shoot footage. You're in luck because this is actually one of the things that we do here at Income we can actually help you with video creation for social media posting. We'll talk to you about your goals, the type of videos that you think you want to create a plan and then make it happen so that you're consistently putting content out every month. And just like in years past, as now, regardless of the platform, consistency is still king, right? If you're going to be posting to any platform, you have to do it consistently over time for a long amount of time to start seeing traction and reaping the rewards of it. If you need to DIY, 
or if you're very interested in doing it yourself, like you're like, I want to learn all of this, start with figuring out the type of videos you want to create. In the show notes, I wrote an article for Marketing Masterminds with examples of all different types of videos that you can make for small businesses. So go check that out, get a little bit of inspiration, and then just kind of get an idea of what you want to create so that you have kind of a framework to work with. And it's going to make it much easier when you actually get to creating footage and into Canva. And then I would start playing with Canva on video creation. Like, do you want to record in Canva? Do you want to just pull video in if you're not? recording video, but you're going to use stock, know what platforms you're going to be on so that you can decide what templates you're going to use. That's where you're going to play around with Canva. And then, so here's a little secret bonus tip that I have for you that I didn't mention before. So if you're using social pilot, which I've talked about before to schedule your social media, there's an integration between Canva and social pilot. So once your videos are all set and ready to go, you can actually pull them directly into Social Pilot and then push them out to the different platforms that you have. It is a time saver, especially with video, because to download the video from Canva and then upload it to Social Pilot will take a lot longer than a couple of images. And so the direct connection where it just puts it from one platform to the other is huge, in my opinion. Okay, so here are my final thoughts for you on this. If you've decided you are just not into video, you're like, man, this is a fad, or you just don't want to tackle it, right? You've got enough other stuff going on, something new like this, your brain's just not ready for it. It's totally okay. You don't have to create video to have successful marketing campaigns. You don't have to be on social to have a successful business. So if you want to talk about how to market your business without social, without video, or any other different way, definitely reach out to me and let's have a conversation. There are so many more options for you. So I don't want you to feel like you can't grow your business unless you do this. That's not the point of this. This is more as if you feel like you need to be on social media, you want to try out some new different things, or if you want to cut up your social media game, or if you feel like it's been a little lackluster, then that's when you want to take a look at this. Also, if you feel like the barrier you have with video is that you just don't understand how all of this works and you don't have the time to figure it out, we can help you with that too. We can do all that heavy lifting for you, including setting up your YouTube channel, making sure all your settings are right, posting, creating content. Yeah, yeah, we can certainly take that on on your behalf. So here at Income Out, we love to give back to the business community. In addition to this podcast, we have a Marketing Masterminds newsletter. So please go sign up for that because I share our how-to videos, some strategic videos, articles through there, And then I create like a little um, gift basket where if I'm featuring a specific video, then I pull out archived podcasts that support that video so that you really get a full picture of the topic that I'm trying to share with you. I've been creating a lot of content now so I can actually bundle them together in a particular newsletter. So definitely go sign up for that. If you want to have a conversation with me about your marketing, about video, about how you hate video or about how you don't like social media, you can schedule a 45 minute consultation with me and we can have that conversation. Go to the website, incoma.com, that is I-N-K-Y-M-A.com and click on the button to schedule a marketing evaluation and pick your day and time and we are together. We also have a contact form. Go fill it out. You can ask me a question. You can recommend a episode topic. I love those. Anything that you need that you feel like, no, I don't want to have a conversation, but I would like to tell you something. I'm ready to hear it. So hopefully you found this interesting and useful for your business. If you did, please share it with other business owners, right? We are all in this soup together as small business owners. We're all wondering how to grow our business. What are the right things to do? Where should we be spending our time? Where should we be spending our money? And so share it so that we can all benefit from it. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you have a amazing day.